Andy, here's your flight. All this cursor here, this is density altitude. This is CHTs here. Here's ETTs. This red line here is fuel flow. Here's manifold pressure and airspeed, true airspeed, indicated airspeed, excuse me. I'm going to add a vertical cursor here. And that's going to give capture everything here in this vertical timeline over here on the right side. EGT, CHTs, RPM, et cetera, et cetera. I want to quickly take a look at one item here I'm going to add in, which is going to be oil pressure. As we see here during the cruise portion, our pressure is 47. And when you start to cool it down, it moves up to maybe 2 psi. I recommend strongly that your cruise oil pressure be 53 to 55 or 56 PSI. To get that pressure, you need to increase the tension on the regulator spring, and it, that's right underneath the oil filter. It's a little stud with a hole in it and a half inch wrench. One turn on that regulator in or out change the pressure 5 to 8 psi depending on of course some spring variabilities etc etc so uh, with this sort of pressure I'd say you want to turn it in a probably a turn in a quarter to increase your pressure to that 53 to 56 psi okay let's take that out of the view well, let's go to where we start to see the problem here I'm going to box this in And we're going to look at some parameters here. Okay, here we are. We're going to move up the EGTs and we're going to bring the CHTs down here. And we're going to discuss this. Right here, we see on this takeoff roll, how do we know on the takeoff roll? Airspeed's 86 knots. We see our target EGTs are right here, are under 1300. So we're plenty rich, plenty, plenty rich. We've got a lot of fuel flow that's going on here. We only need to be about 1300 degrees. So at this point in time, we're sitting at 1269 on roughly our hottest cylinder. And we could be a little leaner. When the nozzle starts to spray fuel, <coughs> we like to have it a nice even spray that creates a pattern that's easily vaporized behind the intake valve so when it gets sucked into the combustion chamber it's distributed evenly we end up with this nice air fuel mixture that burns fairly evenly and then goes out the exhaust port in a consistent temperature from cycle to cycle from burn to burn from compression to compression power cycle to power cycle and we see here the number three doesn't do that because the fuel is disturbed either coming out of the nozzle through the fuel injector line or any number of factors that are there from a possibly a clog nozzle <coughs> or the screen shroud that's behind the uh, fuel injector that's there. So what we need to do is uh, try to a, clean any of those things out. It's not a clogged injector. If it was a clogged injector that happened all of a sudden, we'd see all the other fuel uh, nozzles have to get more flow which would decrease their temperature rich a peak so it's not a clogged nozzle we see here as you climb the temperature gets cooler and cooler so it gets richer and richer on all these EGT numbers the number five here starts to do it as well as it's rich and you increase in altitude to uh, you know 1877 feet the number five starts to disperse and become the same way, a little bit erratic, and we can see that the CHTs also respond in that same fashion. This is real, number five is real, number three is real, number three is real. So, A, lean the mixture out slightly, B, possibly get your fuel nozzle shroud and shroud cleaned out, and possibly replace that number three fuel injector line with another one to see if you can get rid of some distribution of flow, flow issues with that nozzle. You can adjust this with your mixture knob and create a pattern here that's uniform as you climb. Just watch these temperatures here as you climb and appropriately adjust at say every 500 feet of altitude change.